Hey guys, today I'm gonna to do a quick video on a very rare Krigoff Luger, maybe a variation you've never heard of. This is considered a PX gun. Now the PX stands for post exchange. That's where the GIs went to get their groceries and buy things. And one of the things the GIs were looking for were souvenir Lugers. So the time frame is this is after the war, the war's all over, and as GIs were going home, new GIs were coming in. My father-in-law was one of those that came in in 1946 in order to keep the peace until the Germans could uh, police themselves. It's in this time frame that Heinrich Kriegoff is still alive. The factory is still there. He has parts everywhere. I have a letter I'm going to show you where Heinrich Kriegoff said, we made about 500 Lugers for the GIs who wanted souvenirs, and they basically sold those in the PX. I also happen to know that they sold leftover daggers and other memorabilia from the war. Again, you go off to Germany and you want to tell everybody, I took this off of a dead SS officer, when in fact, he might have just bought it at the PX. Let's take a closer look. First, we're gonna take a look at the left-hand side. You can see the serial number, 135, has a much larger font than is typical. You also don't see any firing proofs, but you can see how beautiful the finish is, and they did use the straw finish. Again, this is being made for the GIs to take home as souvenirs. This comes in nine millimeter. Let's look at the right-hand side, and you can see that the Krigoff stamps are here. Now, they would not have been stamped after the war, so these were leftover parts that were ready to go. And from the stamps, it looks like these parts for, were from about 1944. Again, you can see the straw finish, but also the grip screws are even have a fire blue to them. Look at the front strap and the back strap. They're just absolutely beautiful. And the grips and the magazine are considered Black Widow in style. However, these were used by the Krigoff factory at the end of the war as well. Now, another feature I want to point out on the top, you can see that the toggle, there's no Krigoff logo. So this was a new toggle. I have seen these PX guns with Krigoff toggles. This one does not have a Krigoff toggle, but the toggle parts individually do have a few Krigoff stamps on the inside. One other feature that I I want to mention is that uh, just like the 1944 Krigoff, this one has a matching magazine and it's numbered on the spine. Okay, a beautiful gun. And if you go to my book on Third Reich Lugers, it's available on our website, but I'm going to go to the section uh, on 1944 Krigoffs. There's pictures of the Krigoffs here. The proof marks are very similar on this gun, but I suspect more uh, a little bit later, so maybe more like 1945. But again, uh, this was made at the factory uh, during the war, but then put together, assembled after the war. The other feature that you may not be able to see, it does have the thumbprint. If you watch my videos, it does have a thumbprint right there. And then I wanted to point out also in the book, it talks about in 1944, instead of numbering the bottom of the magazine, because again, this is plastic, and when you tried to number it, it would uh, break the plastic. So for a very short period of time at the end of the war, they numbered it right here, and that's de documented in the book, and also found in this PX gun. Also in the book, I have a copy of this letter. It's very hard to see. Um, so I'm going to read this last paragraph. It's actually a question to Heinrich Krigoff uh, by researchers. They're asking about the KU. He doesn't answer that question, but he does say, you can see here's his signature. And by the way, this was written in 1964. So Heinrich was still alive then. And the letter is to Harry Jones, who wrote a book about Lugers. Last paragraph, it says, my craftsmen at Seoul assembled during six weeks till the Russians came from the parts in my factory, 500 to 600 of Lugers for the American soldiers. Uh, his English is not perfect, but you get the idea. He said they put these together for the American soldiers. Uh, in a sense, he's saying, look how nice I was. I made, I made Lugers for the Americans. Uh, I guess that's a way of saying, not only did I help the, the Germans, but I also helped the American soldiers get some souvenirs. The factory originally had been in Seoul, uh, but that was, as he points out, it was taken over by the Russians. So they moved their operations and continued uh, making shotguns and other guns in Ulm, uh, very similar to the Walder factory. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. This was just quick and easy, but a pretty rare gun, only about 500 to 600 of them made. 
uh, and it was made in the Krigoff factory with Krigoff parts.